This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. In this demonstration, we're going to look at some of the abilities to troubleshoot group policy applications. We've talked about just a variety of potential conflicts that can happen you know, and, and what we should do in order to, to troubleshoot. And really, there are a number uh, of, of different options that you've got. So let's open up the Group Policy Management Console. Uh, really, I think one of the very first things that you should do when troubleshooting group policy related problems is just to go and validate the settings, you know, and just look at them. Now, in some environments, there may be so many GPOs that that's difficult to get a glimpse of. Uh, but in some, it's going to be simple enough where I can, you know, select the GPOs and, and, and try, to, uh, try to make sure that they're correctly linked, they're linked to the right OUs. Uh, you know, they haven't, don't have security filtering turned on. You can click the settings and check out the settings in the actual GPO, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, now, but you do have a, uh, maybe potentially a more efficient way of doing that down here with the group policy results, okay? The group policy results, launch a group policy results wizard, and you select a computer. I'm going to try to hit uh, another computer, although yeah, this should should be fine. Okay, there do need to be certain rules that are enabled on this machine uh, and so every once in a while you'll hit next and you'll get uh, an RPC error, couldn't connect to the WMI service. That's a firewall issue uh, and so uh, you know you need to then go and, and enable the remote management. I chose the server because if you've enabled remote management on the server then it's going to have opened up the appropriate rules. Notice then I have a list. These are the users that have logged into this system. Okay? Uh, and so this is not a hypothetical by any stretch. It, this is what's currently in place. So you get a call, somebody is having a problem with group policy, you plug in their computer name, you choose their uh, user account from the list, you hit next and next, and it runs this report. And it generates a report for you of which policies apply to that system. Okay, and here's just kind of a summary. It's a fast link, not a slow link. Your policy will have a tendency to, or will, turn off certain settings on a slow link. On details, you see the applied and denied GPOs. Just make sure you're looking at, you know, you've got computer settings first, so applied and denied. If you've got a denied GPO, you can see the reason it was denied. In this case, it was empty. Okay, and then on the, uh, on the user details, the applied and denied GPOs. You know, the, uh, the default domain policy is applied, and again, or I mean, excuse me, denied, and the reason it was empty. And you say, wait a minute, it's not empty. Well, it was empty, it didn't have user settings in it. Okay, so for server number three, which is just sitting in a server container, uh, or I'm excuse me, in the computer's container, these policies uh, are applied. This is the effective settings. Now the other way I can do that is just go into the command prompt or PowerShell and type GP result. GP result forward slash V will show me verbose information, basically shows me the same information. Now that kind of went on and on and on, but it's showing me same kind of stuff. Uh, apply GPOs, deny GPOs, security group membership, and it actually gets in and actually shows me the settings. Another way of doing that is GP result forward slash H, uh, and then a, a report. Okay, so we'll just go see report.html, and that creates a, uh, a file. That'll create a file here on my C drive, and I can just go open it up. Now, the difference in the two, very, very little. I mean, this is basically the exact same report you got in the GPMC. Not only does it show you the policy that wins, or the, the setting, but it shows you where it comes from, which policy. This is invaluable for troubleshooting conflicting settings, inheritance, enforcement issues, uh, those, those kinds of things. So primary difference between GP result and the GPMC is 
This one requires a group policy management snap-in, which you're only really going to have on the domain controllers or administrative workstations by default. If you're at a user's desk, then you really want to use that GP result. Okay? If you, you know, think you've fixed the problem, then we have GP update with the force parameter. That'll force policy refreshes. Uh, you also have uh, PowerShell command invoke uh, GP update. You know, you have the ability in here in the in the snap-in, if you need to, to force a group policy update. Okay, now what that'll do, and this is actually not going to you know, do anything because I have no computer object. So it looks for computer objects and then tries to force a, uh, a policy update on all those computer objects. You get a little status and whatnot. Here, let's see a better example of that. Uh, by opening up users and computers, and I'm going to move a couple of these servers to the servers container. Okay. So we'll move them to the servers container, then we'll create and do this uh, uh, IT admin GPO to the servers container. Again, just kind of an example purpose, but then we can right click and we can say we want to do a group policy update. So now it shows four computers. Are you sure you want to update it? Yes. And then it goes through the process of attempting to get them to, to force the updates. Okay. So it succeeded here. These are waiting. Well, it's actually failed. I, I think uh, a couple of those servers are turned off. In fact, they might all three be turned off. So, okay. But that's a, it, we see a status, and so we get success and failure. So you can do that remotely. You can do GP update locally to force it. You use GP results or the results wizard to test out what's currently in place. And you can use the modeling wizard to do a hypothetical. Okay, this is a simulation. This is what I is what you can do initially when you've created a GPO and you haven't actually linked it to a container that has any accounts in it yet. So pick a domain controller that you want to do your simulation on, and then you say, okay, well let's just simulate. You know, if what if? Uh, the uh, a user in the IT department logs on to one of the servers, you know, for instance. Uh, and, and another thing that you might do is you might just create a test OU. And any policies that you create, you link to that test OU, and then I can generate a report on what would happen if those policies were in place. Now, the vast majority of the time, you can probably just skip to the final page of the wizard. Uh, it's going to ask you all kinds of other things. Slow network connections. Are you using loopback processing, which is this kind of strange setting which will uh, enforce computer settings over users. It's for special use computers. Uh, are they going to be in a particular site? Uh, security group membership. You know, if none of this stuff actually is in the policies, okay, like those options, if you didn't do any security filtering, then you don't need to simulate uh, different group membership because everything applies. Uh, so we have that for users, we have it for computers, we have WMI filters for users and for computers. But again, in, in many cases, I haven't added any of these filters, so therefore I don't need to simulate for them. All right? We hit next, next, and then when we're done here, the result is identical to the group policy results. Uh, result. <laughs> but what's the difference? Well, the difference is this is a hypothetical. This is not actually in place. This is just a, a what if. You know, and I chose a couple OUs that were already there, but especially if you choose a test OU, there's nobody in that OU. These policies don't actually uh, affect anybody right now. It's a little strange. This simulation usually takes all of about five seconds to, to go. Uh, and then I, I get, again, a report that, the report that looks exactly like the result and set of policy. So there we go. Now it's finished. There's my report. Uh, we get the information here. You know, I get uh, potential alerts here. So the default domain policy is enforced. The IT admin GPO has computer config uh, disabled. Okay. We get the applied and denied GPOs. We get the reasons. And we'd get the individual settings you know, and where they were uh, actually coming from. So you get all that same information, but in a hypothetical uh, type of scenario. So that can be very useful. Final thing we want to take a look at are the event logs. Let's go here and type in event viewer. 
<coughs> okay, now we'll open up Event Viewer. Uh, most of your stuff is going to be in the Windows system log with the group policy source. You can go and look there. I said there was, there's one. You know, basically just says it was processed successfully. You got new settings from two GPOs detected and applied there. Uh, but you also have a location here under Microsoft Windows, the applications and services log, there's going to be a group policy section. And this will show operational and administrative types of events a little bit more detailed information. Um, you can configure additional trace logging and then there's a GPO trace utility that you can use. That would be for more extreme uh, troubleshooting. I personally haven't run into those issues. You know, most of the time we're just talking about inheritance, conflicts, you know, just incorrectly linked policies and whatnot. You know, every once in a while you get into one of these settings or one of these situations where you have to go to the event logs, but a lot of them uh, can be fixed just with the standard tools that we've already shown. So a couple locations there in the event logs to know about uh, in order to troubleshoot the application of group policy. So there you have it, uh, those tools at your disposal and you should be able to fix any group policy related issues. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.